Liliano Yoy here with one of the most politest guys outside of the ring, but inside is just a killer. Virgil, talk to me a little bit about when you received that phone call that Boha Chuck was like an aspiring opponent because I know they were trying to troll, throw Lupin at you yeah. and all the other names. Was there any choice of yours or you just kind of went with who they gave you? Whoever was uh, the most available was pretty much the one I was going to go after. And uh, you know, Boha Chuck was, uh, I guess, he was the most available we're fighting now. And he also has a WBC interim, so that makes the fight even better. So uh, that's, that's how it came about. Now, you were specifically at first at 140. You couldn't get a title shot. It's, it's there. It seemed like because I mean, a lot of your stable mates were at 140 at the time and then the World Boxing Series. And then at 147, it was a lot of like PBC, other side of the street. Do you feel like this division, it's kind of a division that you kind of have more of a say in who you can fight? Uh, I wouldn't say more of a say, but definitely I feel like there's a lot more opportunity. You know, I'm, I'm up there. I'm ranked number one and I think in a few, uh, you know, belts, organizations or whatever. But uh, I think this is the, no, I know this is the division that I'll, I'll be champion. You tweeted when the fight got announced that this was officially your start at TakeOver at 154. How do you envision that coming at, on August 10th? Because it's obviously both of your styles. A lot of people are excited. Oh, yeah. You know, we both have uh, exciting styles. And, you know, I feel like they complement each other, you know. So it's going to be a really good fight come August 10th. And, uh, no, we're just, uh, it's, I'm very excited overall, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to fight, I'm ready to step back in the ring. We, um, with Boa Chuck, you guys sparred, it's obviously you guys were more than 50 rounds. How do you feel like he looks at you coming in? Do you feel like he feels he has to be a little bit more cautious since he's already been knocked down before? Uh, I really don't know, you know, I, he's, I've already heard him in interviews say that I can't hurt him or whatever, and... That's fine. Believe believe what you want, you know. Uh, that's, that's better for me, you know what I mean? Like, if you underestimate me. I, I love to be underestimated. But uh, I really don't care how, how he comes into the ring. You know, we're, we're ready for anything. We're ready for the worst. You know, that's that's how we prepare for the fights. And uh, we're, we're going to be ready you know, for whatever. You talk about preparing for the worst. And then just this past week, and I don't know if you saw Austin Silva, he had, like, a really bad knockout, even though he was a favorite in the Jake Ponder card. He's actually... A former Olympian and he got he got like knocked out cold yeah. and you know he's getting a lot of nice messages but how do you feel about you know especially in your fight where it's definitely gonna be kind of like with the Kavalaskis fight but we knew a knockout was gonna come how do you not even go there in your mind that it might be you on the floor I don't think about it uh, I just don't I don't really think about it you know I feel like uh, some people do have to prepare for that moment when I say the worst, I didn't even, I don't even think about being knocked out or being knocked down or hurt. I just think of like, oh, I'm in a fucking dog fight. You know, that for me, that's the worst. Uh, but I know that mentally I have that fortitude where I don't have to work on it. I don't have to have psychologists come to me and like, okay, you're the best. You know, like Ramses is number one. Like, not your Libre type shit. <laughs> you're down I, their shoulders. I don't need that shit. You know, I just, I, I have the mentally, I'm good mentally. You know, we're just preparing physically and uh, intelligently. People keep saying, they keep bringing up your, the fact that you haven't got, gone the distance and the fact that his style is very relentless and come forward. What do you take of those, of those, you know, quote unquote critiques? I love it because I'm going to prove him wrong. I'm going to prove him wrong. That's, I love to prove people wrong. That's my favorite thing right there. Now, Mean Machine is one of the guys that you fought and you had a, probably one of my favorite fights of yours have been with him. You kind of made him a guy that comes and helps you out in sparring as well. He recently called out Boots and is how would you even, you know, how do you, what do you think of that fight? Man, that's a, that's a really good fight. That's a, very interesting. You know, uh, Boots is obviously, he's a, he's a world champion at 147 and, uh, you know, he has the skills and I think that Mean Machine is also fucking strong. He's the strongest opponent I've ever been in a ring with fighting or sparring, you know? And uh, I think that's a very interesting matchup. I would love to see it. Back when a lot of people feel like he dropped you, a lot of people feel like he dropped yeah. Crawford. Now him coming in with Madrimov, do you feel like maybe Madrimov has enough power to kind of drop Crawford like that too? I, you know, Madrimov does have the power. He, he can do it. I know he can do it. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's going to come down to IQ because Crawford, he's just very smart. You know, he's not just going to get caught uh, with a stupid punch, you know. And Majumon's not stupid. That's the thing. He's, he's intelligent. He has a, a lot of athleticism. But, you know, like I said before, Crawford, he's, uh, he's different. Uh, that's, that's, that's the best as I can put it. He's just different. He's smart. He's fast. He's sharp. So it's going to be tough to drop Crawford.
Oscar talked about how now his guys at Golden Boy are, for example, you going from contender to now title contender and possibly champion. And now here, when I would first come, you'd be sparring the, the older guys. Now Leo Rualcaba is in the ring with you. How does it feel now your transition as well, not only as a Golden Boy now currently contending for a champion and then now being here also one of the older guys that helps the younger guys? It, it's, I feel old, man. <laughs> You know, I was thinking about it the other day. I'm like, man, like when I first got here, you know, it was Solicito and Abner Mares and Mikey. Now I'm that old guy. I'm that old head. You know, might as well call me Unk and shit. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy. No, but it feels good because, you know, I can pass down the wisdom to, uh, you know, to the younger guys. I can relate to them, you know, and, uh, you know, whatever, how, whatever way I can help them in their careers and help them be smarter. And, you know, because we want to get better, you know, uh, I would love to do that. How do you feel like if people ask about what do you what do you get out of sparring someone like Leo Rubalcaba who has eight fights? What would you say to the people who ask why you get in the ring with them? I believe that the younger fighters are sharper. They really are. I feel like they're sharper, they're faster. You know, uh, you got to... When we get older or, you know, the older fighters, you know, they don't have that athleticism anymore. But what keeps them high is the IQ and how smart they are, the experience. So... You know, you have the best up here with the with the old people, the experience, and you know the younger people might not be as experienced, but they got that athleticism. They're sharp up here. You know, they're they haven't taken too many punches. They're they're just on the go, and uh, that helps too. You know, it keeps me sharp. Lately, we also see the fact that they want you guys to be entertainers. That's always been boxing, and you don't have a problem with that because of your extensive knockout record. But, you know, we saw with Shakur that people, a lot of people criticize them. How do you feel about that? You know, you obviously get knockouts, but do you feel like you owe it to the fans to entertain? Or are you going to be more cautious when you have to because you want to win? I think that... So it's, it's, a, it's not a tough question, but I, I think everyone's different. For me, I hate boring fights. I don't like to watch boring fights, and I don't I don't want to be a part of one, you know. And uh, it's not that I, I don't care that if the audience boos me or not, or if they're booing the fight, but it's just like, man, I feel like I'm wasting my time, you know, just just kind of being in a boring fight or whatever. And it's kind of like that in sparring as well. But in sparring, I have to stop myself down. You know what? Well, I'm not here to kill him. We're just working on shit. But in a fight, it's just like. Uh, I don't know. It's a good and a bad thing, honestly. It is a good and a bad thing. So, uh, but see, the thing is, the fans, uh, the fans aren't in there. They're not the ones getting hit. They're, of course, they're paying for the fight. They're, you know, the reasons why we're getting paid. But at the same time, they're not the ones in there. So it's. Uh, I see both sides. Yeah. And, and I was going to ask you that because you're super polite, but I've seen you like have a little bit of clapbacks <laughs> with the people in the comments. Do you feel like maybe you've also had past experiences with like Twitter people being a little bit crazy with you? Do you feel like a lot, especially with boxing, the fans get a little comfortable with the, with the oh, yeah. you know, how they talk to boxers and they, athletes? I, a lot of people, a lot of fans, okay, so look, like people think that uh, they can criticize athletes all they want. And you know what? That's fine. You, you, you can do that, you know, but uh, at the same time, like, they don't know what it's like. They, they, all they see is the fight, right? They don't see the sparring. They don't see the hard work. They don't see us starving on, on the, the fight week and having to do interviews when we don't want to fucking yeah. do interviews during fight week. You know what I mean? Uh, everyone uh, hitting you up, asking for fucking free tickets and free shirts. And, and that's fine. You know, we love the support. We love the support, you know, but... It's just like, damn, it's like, uh, you kind of have to be, you don't have to be, people are not, but people think that you have to be perfect all around. And I try to be like that when I was younger. And um, I, don't, I try to be like that when I was younger. Thanks for the sparring, bro. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. I try to be like that when I was younger. Now I'm, I'm starting to care less and less. You know, I, I, I really don't care. I'm starting to talk shit back. Because they're not the ones fighting in the ring. They, they've never trained a day in their lives. You know, they think maybe they got one or two wins in the street fight. You know, it's not the same. You know, it's, it, I don't know. But uh, I can I can go on and on forever. On this. This, this is a whole day. I could write a fucking book on this. You know, but. Are you surprised that one of Brian Garcia's, like, top fan on Twitter was Jack? Jack Alter was one of the guys that was. I was a little surprised, yeah. <laughs> now, with Ryan, obviously, a lot of people bring up the amateurs oh i beat you in the amateurs yeah. and what do you think of that of people who pull up oh this guy got 
beat this guy in the amateurs and then in a way to hike, kind of hype up the fight. I know you yeah. kind of put that meme, <laughs> that, like that, that yeah, thump, yeah, 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 but you know, what do you, do you even feel that Oscar would even let him get in the ring with you? I don't even, you know what, I'm not even worried about him at all, you know, like, like I said, all the energy is one-sided at this point. When I, when I send clapback messages or tweets, I don't care. You know, it's just, it's more like, uh, I'm not going to let you say something, but at the same time, like, I'm not bothered by it. It's more of like, uh, you jab me, it's not like, uh, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not coming at you like, like, for negativity. It's just like, okay, yeah, shut up, whatever, I don't care. Like, get the fuck away from me, whatever. But, uh, Ryan is just, this, I'm sure this dude is fucking stressed the fuck out. I'm sure he's mentally, whatever. Now, I don't condone anything that he says or does, not even a little bit. Um, but man, this dude, he's just, I'm not even in his shoes, so I can't even, uh, I can't relate. I can't relate to him. That's the thing. He's on a different level, like of, uh, of the stress, you know, he has two kids. He has a lot of pressure. He's, he's the provider of the family. I'm, I'm assuming, you know, and, uh, I'm sure it's a lot of pressure. Lastly, Virgil, with your fight being a week after the August 3rd where you initially were supposed to be, do you think people are going to be putting your name again with Crawford? And even though he kind of is more looking towards bigger fights, possibly Canelo, do you kind of want to just let go of that alone and focus on the fighters who are interested in possibly pursuing a fight with you should you win that WBC uh, interim championship? Or do you still kind of want to be at his toes, you know, trying to be there, trying to get him? I think there, I think those two things coincide with each other. I think it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be a belt. Uh, if he, we can technically still unify for the WBC and his WBA or whatever, you know, because he's gonna win, in my opinion. Because then that will put him in line to fight Spence and uh, Fundora if they fight. You know, I don't know how official that is or whatever, but you know, or I could fight him and then we could unify or whatever. But I see, I see it. I still see it happening. It's gonna happen. You know. All right, Virgil, lastly, just let the fans know where they can follow you but not bug you <laughs> on social media. You can bug me, but, you know, you might not get a reply, you know, talking shit. But uh, Virgil Ortiz on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, I don't really reply because I don't get on there. You know, so I'm sorry to my Facebook fans. I do try, but, you know, it's it's a lot. But uh, just, just Virgil Ortiz. Spell it right, though. V-E-R-G-I-L. V-E. <laughs> not V-I. Yeah. Right, thank you.